So at this point, we now know how to uh, edit a view, and we know how to adjust, adjust when columns appear in a view, and how to change their order. We also know how to add filters and how to only show specific content within a view. You can get very, very creative with these settings, and we've already seen uh, how to create custom views that organize content in a way that's meaningful for your users. Uh, your particular environment obviously has very specific metadata, so play around with those different views and uh, see what works best for you. Now let's get into a step that's a bit more complex. Let's create a view that allows me to cascade down through items in the document library based off of metadata. And I actually showed you an example of this at the start of the webinar. Uh, using grouping will allow me to create experiences similar to what you'll find on like a self-help software site. And the effect is very similar to the search refiners that you find on a search center. For, for a grouping view, I think my users in this site might want to group by something like uh, dream quality and dream length. And we've seen the type of metadata that I have here in my document library, so we know that I can, uh, I can do that sufficiently because I have enough things that are tagged with that stuff. Uh, to create this view, again, I'm just going to go up to this uh, create a view area, and we're going to create a new view. And again, I'm just going to do a standard view for this. So let's just call this Dreams Grouping. And I don't think I pointed it out before, but here you can actually create views that are uh, showing to everybody, or you can create views just for yourself so that you're not just uh, throwing out, out a bunch of things into the public uh, environment that aren't necessarily useful to the other people, but could be useful for you. So at this point here, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to uncheck a couple things here because we mentioned that we're going to do grouping by dream quality and dream length. So I don't necessarily need those columns to show up because they'd just be a little redundant. It's not going to hurt anything if they show up, but uh, it's just not adding much to my uh, experience by those those appearing. So now I'm going to go down this page. And we're going to jump past filtering at this point, and we're going to jump down to uh, group by. So here on group by, we're going to set the first uh, type of grouping that we want. And we mentioned that dream quality was the first thing that we want people to be able to group on. So we're going to choose dream quality. And in this case, I'm going to do ascending order. I think in my initial example, I showed you at the start of the webinar, it was descending. And then we're going to do dream length for my other option. I'm just going to set them to be collapsed uh, initially, but you could set those to expand uh, if you wanted to. I'm going to show uh, number of groups per page. I'm fine with just that, uh, that total right there. And again, there's a lot of uh, other additional things that you're able to manipulate here. Uh, just uh, I'm not going to be able to go through every single thing on this webinar, but make sure you play around with some of these additional settings, uh, such as totals and things like that. We're just going to click OK. And now we'll notice that I now have a grouping view showing up. So here I'm able to see, OK, dream quality. I see 34 items are within. Uh, this particular field and what this means is that nobody's actually tagged this with content so the dream quality is just kind of a null field here we can see things that people have actually tagged so I can expand dream quality to great I can see there's 12 items there and then I can see that my dream length I can continue to drill down on or group by and I can expand items where the dream length is long. So now I know that I have dream quality great, dream length long, and see those additional fields here. And again, remember we removed those particular columns for dream quality and dream length out here uh, because they'd be a little redundant to see them in both places. So now we should have a really good grasp on ways to organize document libraries through views. But let's do one final step to really make this document library shine. Using Ontolica Library Preview, which is available as a standalone Ontolica module on any version of SharePoint, I can add previews of 
documents, web pages, emails, um, even things like AutoCAD files or Illustrator files. And I can add those here to this document library. And you probably caught this briefly at the start of this webinar when I showed examples of various different views. If you have Ontolica Library Preview, you can easily add previews to, again to any of your views within various different document libraries. To start, I just need to create a new column in this document library. And this is the exact same as creating a column for any of the other metadata that we've worked with. I just skipped that step on other content because it would have taken forever to fill in a bunch of values for uh, metadata for all my different documents. If you've never added a column to a document library, just check out our quick tip number two that's all about that subject. And I'll also make sure that's posted with the recording of this webinar. If you've already created a preview column in another document library prior to migrating this data, uh, just like any of my other columns, I wouldn't actually need to do this step. However, I want to show you the whole process so you know it from start to finish here. So here I'm just going to add a new preview column. So I'm just going to jump up to the library tools right here, and I'm going to do Create Column. And in this case, I'm just going to call this column Preview, but I could call it whatever I want. This name doesn't have to be specific. And I want to add this column type for uh, Ontolica Preview Columns for Libraries. And I could give it a description, but I really don't uh, care one way or another on that. And I uh, know already that I want to add this to my default view. So I'm just going to click OK there, and it'll automatically add to my default view. Now, I'll know it's not going to add to this particular view. I'm going to have to do that, uh, that manually. But we can actually see that this will work uh, for my All Documents view, which is uh, my default view here. And before... Uh, editing anything on the way that the settings are working with Ontolica Preview, I notice that I have this little first page uh, preview icon here. And the way this is done is by default this is able to just preserve the, the way that you've organized your content in your document libraries as far as the row size goes. Because uh, if you did a, first, a little first page preview there, you can obviously throw off the size of columns if you've, uh, if you've done something very customized. But here I know I can scroll over this first page preview icon and then I could click on that and it will pull up a full document preview for me and I can scroll over my images and I can click on a page that's of particular interest to me and I can pull that up and see a full page high resolution preview on this. I should also note that I did do a crawl uh, after initiate, initially creating this document library. If you do, if you do this, if you add document previews before you actually do a crawl uh, after adding content to a document library, you'll get the full document preview. You just won't get back uh, the first page preview until a full crawl has been uh, has been initiated because those those are generated in, from a cache database there. But I have to admit, I'm really not a huge fan of this default setting here. Uh, I know that this is in place because it, it allows it allows you to make sure that there's no way your users are going to break the formatting of your document library. But for anybody that's a bit more of a power administrator, uh, we can make this uh, much, much better here. And I, I, what I want to do here is I want to actually show a first page preview instead of this little icon right here. And you can do that by editing the web part. So here I'm just going to go to Site Actions and Edit Page. And when I added that document library preview uh, column to the page, this web part was added on here. And you'll notice that this has different areas that you can control, but I want to just work with this first page preview settings right here. Here I'm going to go to Show Advanced Settings. And if I want to show a first page preview instead of that first thumbnail there, I'm just going to uncheck this box right here for show thumbnail images instead. By doing that, I also know that I'm not really happy with this particular size of my, my document. Again, this is done to, to 
resist the urge of breaking any sort of firm formatting, but I know the exact limits of my particular document library that I'm working with. And a default document library is usually pretty uh, pretty happy to accept an image resolution of uh, 24 by 60 here. And now we'll notice that this wasn't the same dimension uh, in dimensions in comparison that I was working with before. Uh, I think it was showing 16 by 16, but this will allow my PowerPoints to actually expand a little bit uh, a little bit more there because they're a little wider. The other thing that I want to do here is I want to actually change the zoom animation speed. Because I've edited the size of the document, uh, I, I want to double this really because it'll make it just look a little bit better when it, uh, it zooms out. Again, these are settings that you don't necessarily have to make. These are just things that I've I, I found with some experience of playing around with uh, various different settings. And you'll notice there's a lot that you can edit here. You can actually even change how the click action works when you uh, click on the first page preview. But I'm just going to click OK here. And I'm going to stop editing my page. And then you will notice that I have a first page preview that's able to show up right here and I can uh, see that and then I can click on the first page and it will analyze the full document for me. Maybe that wasn't fair because that was held in cache because it was done within the last hour. Uh, let's, let's do another example that's maybe a little bit more fair to show that it really is analyzing documents in real time. And this is interesting by the way if you have content that is accessed very frequently there's an option to keep previews in cache so those don't have to be generated in real time. They can be generated and stored for a little bit of time and come back instantly. The only other thing I wanted to show here is that we can actually do this preview uh, as well on your uh, your grouping view. Uh, there is one little trick to that though. Uh, on my grouping view, let's go to that. And what I need to do to expose it here on my grouping is I need, just need to uh, first off uh, add the, uh, the particular column. So here I'm going to modify the view. And I want to uh, show my preview column. So I'm going to check that. And I really want that to show up as the first column in my list here. Look a little odd if that was at the very end. So I'm going to jump that to column number one, and we saw how to do that earlier. And then the only other thing that I do need to change here is I need to select inline editing. So allow inline editing right here. And this only needs to be done on a grouping uh, document libraries. It doesn't need to be do done on the other document libraries. And here uh, I can see that I can expand my dream quality and. Uh, then dream length, and now I have uh, previews here within uh, within my grouping. Let's collapse that and get it to a grouping that's got a little bit more content here. We'll go over uh, my second page and my results here. And just like we were looking at before, here was uh, my grouping for dream quality is great and dream length is long. And again, I have my previews that are able to show up right here. And uh, my first page preview, I'm able to click on that and pull back my full document preview and I can click on the the page of my document library preview right there and get back a nice high resolution preview that I'm able to actually read and with that uh, we'll bring our webinar on uh, SharePoint document library organizations made simple uh, to a, a close here I do want to encourage if you haven't had a chance to check out uh, Ontalica preview for either search or document libraries do make sure to uh, check out more details on that on surfray.com we have some great uh, demos there that are, are very short uh, and then I'd also more than, be more than happy to provide a walkthrough of any of the Ontalica modules for you or even help you set up a trial on your local environment. Uh, just a few things to note here about Ontalica Library Preview. It does work on SharePoint 2007 or 2010. I know we just looked at 2010. And you saw that it allows you to do instant first page previews and full document previews in real time. If you deploy it in a search environment, if you deploy Ontalica Search Preview, it'll actually even go a little further and it'll do hit highlighting and uh, note relevant pages and things like that. And it does, uh, interesting enough, support 
support over 500 different file formats, and that's something very, very unique to Ontolica Preview. It's not uh, just limited to things like docx or pptx files, like uh, like fast, for example. Um, and then finally, uh, one of the most interesting notes I always like to point out is this is actually a program that's smartphone and tablet compatible. So that means you don't actually have to have programs like Silverlight or Office web apps installed. And so as you're increasing the drive towards mobility in your organization, you have, yeah, if you have people accessing your uh, document libraries and SharePoint from things like uh, Blackberries or iPads or iPhones, that's all completely supported, uh, which is very, very unique there to uh, a product like that. And finally, I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar on SharePoint Document Library Organization Made Simple. I'd encourage you, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, again, my name is Josh Noble. My email address is shown here on the screen, jno at surfray.com. And make sure to check out my book, uh, Pro SharePoint 2010 Search, and our uh, solutions uh, on Talica uh, Search Preview and Aggregate uh, for SharePoint. Thanks for joining.